My dear friends, it's good to speak to you on this Feast of Pentecost, the day when we celebrate the first um, gift of the Holy Spirit to all the disciples of Jesus who were gathered in the upper room with Mary. It was a great experience for them because it inflamed them to get out from their, their place of hiding, their place of solitude, out into the world to preach the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Unfortunately, that's not really possible for us now because of the coronavirus and the severe limitations we have on our freedom. And we've offered up that freedom uh, to preserve life and um, to protect the good things in our society. But nevertheless, this feast is one where we can rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit reveals himself to us in many strange and different ways. I remember once when I was um, a new priest, I won't say young because I was 30, 33, or 30, yeah, 33 when I was ordained, and I, um, and I was celebrating a Sunday Mass, and I think everything possible went wrong. Uh, first of all, the the singers didn't turn up and the people who, who stood in for them were sang out a key. It was so bad that even I noticed it. And uh, then one of the uh, altar servers, the thurifer, tipped up the thurible and it, the coals burnt a hole in the new carpet on the sanctuary. And, and I also messed up my sermon. It was really just a, a pretty miserable celebration of the Eucharist. And I... Uh, in the sacristy afterwards, an Australian priest who was uh, concelebrating with me said, said, Malcolm, what you need to do is to put all these people on a bus and take them for a trip into the bush, go to the outback. But I kind of took that advice, but we didn't go to the outback. Uh, but we did go to other places. Uh, we went for day trips to the seaside. We went, to, we went on pilgrimage, particularly to Walsingham and to Aylesford, Shrines of Our Lady. And then we also, of course, did started our annual pilgrimage to Lourdes. So coming to Liverpool Archdiocese, I was so delighted to come across all our young people in Lourdes. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't for me um, something that I was unfamiliar with, but at that particular time, those young people gave me great hope and they lifted my heart, you know. Well, this year, unfortunately, we've had to postpone our pilgrimage. So speaking to the young people here, I want you to perhaps think, um, think about um, praying um, to Our Lady during that week at the end of July when we would have been in Lourdes, asking her to intercede with her son for you so that you may receive that gift of the Spirit, the gift of Jesus' Spirit, the gift of the Father's Spirit, which gives us so much life. It's when people come together that we celebrate the Eucharist fully. It's when we uh, reunite ourselves as God's people that we can sense so much more going on in the liturgy and in our own personal lives. We, if you like to use the phrase of a young, uh, which described a young adult group I was associated with for many years in the South, we, we discovered community. You discover community by being together in Jesus Christ. And that then casts a new light on our liturgy and on our daily lives. When I was... Um, uh, later in my, in my uh, experience as a priest, when I went to Teze with a group of young adults, something similar took place because there we didn't have the comforts of Lourdes, but we did enjoy the journey, we did enjoy the experience of being together, and that uh, wonderful opening up of the, uh, of, of, of the Holy Spirit in our lives certainly was visible. It was as though we could touch that gift of God in our midst. It was that real. When um, we celebrate Pentecost this year, of course, it's not going to be quite the same because we are still under lockdown. But nevertheless, 
uh, and I stress this now particularly to the young people, the spirit that we're being given at Pentecost is the spirit of truth. It's the spirit that will teach us all truth. And I think if we can just meditate on that for a moment in our personal lives and realise that there is such a thing as truth, that we don't have to deal with fake news all the time. We don't have to deal with people who give us twisted stories and make things which are really quite straightforward, um, complicated, so that the, the real truth about our situation, about our world, our society is hidden from us. There is a way in which you, as, a, as an individual, an individual who has been gifted by God, who has been filled with his Holy Spirit, it will, through study, through opening your heart and your ears and your mind to knowledge and to God, that you will be able to discern what the truth is. So that's a challenge for you. It's a challenge for you to carry that out during the following weeks as lockdown is lifted. To be clear-minded and to be thoughtful will, and to be prayerful will help you discern what is really true in the world. That gift of the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, will be, if you like, your lifeline in a, for the future. It will enable you to re-enter society, to get back to your studies, to your, to your work, to your profession, whatever you're doing, it will enable you to do that with, with a, a new look at the world, a fresh look at the world, which, uh, which is guided by the Holy Spirit, guided by your experience, guided by, by your truth, which you will treasure. Remember, Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Also, I hope that when we go back to church, then the liturgy will look different for you because you will now be part of a people who's learned to reach out to others by helping each other, by shopping, by collecting prescriptions, by cooking meals, all those things that we've all been doing for each other. As a community, we've really discovered what that means. Those early Christians just shortly after that great gift of the Holy Spirit. I think the way it's put in the Acts of the Apostles is that they, they remained in the Apostles' teaching, the communion or the fellowship, the breaking of bread, that's to say what we now call the Mass, and their prayers. Those four things characterise their community. What a gift of the Spirit. So that will enable us if we reflect on that little quotation from Scripture, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42, will enable you to get new meaning out of what it means to come together in Jesus Christ, and especially to come together in the liturgy at Holy Mass. I know later on in the year, many of you were hoping to be confirmed, and also, uh, even more, perhaps, of you were hoping to attend a great celebration for young people called Encounter, which, which animate our Catholic Youth Service, have been planning. All of those things, both of those things, have, uh, have, have now been postponed. But that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not there for you. It's, he is. He's the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit that will live with you and enable you to get new perspectives on this rather complicated, confused world in which we now live. So enjoy the Feast of Pentecost today and throughout its octave and remember that the Holy Spirit is a gift to you personally but also, perhaps more importantly, a gift to the whole church. It's a spirit which has a mind of its own, a spirit which enlivens and flames, that teaches us the truth. God bless you all.